Greetings. So, I got a short story for you. You know, I like to cook every once in a while. The only reason I don't necessarily like to cook is because then I got to clean up. And I'm the only one home right now. My wife's out of town until the, pretty much the end of May. And so, if I cook, I got to clean. And if all I'm doing is just making an egg, you know, so I can have an egg sandwich, it's not a big deal. You cook it, you swipe it, you know, you swish it through the water with a little bit of soap, and you're done. But when you're really looking to cook a bigger meal, of course, now you've got a whole lot of stuff that you're going to mess up. Anyway, one of the things I like to do is I like to make rice, then put it in the fridge for a long time, let it get all cold and everything, then fry up some chicken. And I don't mean like fried chicken where you batter it, whatever, because I don't know how to do any of that. Instead, what I'm pretty much doing is I'm getting skinless chicken, mainly chicken thighs, and I cook the chicken thighs in there and I cut it all up into you know these really small pieces and then I fry the rice I throw in the chicken I throw in vegetables onions I flavor it all up and I'm good to go it absolutely becomes a wonderful meal and I love to do it but it takes a long time so the other day I decided well I'm gonna take a shortcut so I was at Wegmans, that's our grocery store, and I decided to buy one of their pre-made rotisserie chickens. And, you know, they're not bad if you're looking for a, kind of a quick, decent meal. You know, it's rotisserie chicken. You know what? You bring it home, you put some sauce on it, you eat it. Maybe I'd buy, like, a frozen mashed potatoes, heat that up, and at least it's something It's quick. It's already done, and you can eat it. In this case, I decided I was going to use that instead of having to cook the other chicken and I was going to you know be fine I had cooked the rice the night before so it was nice and cold in the refrigerator you know so I could just take it out and fry it so you would think that this would be just an easier way to get the exact same meal that I was used to having it turns out that stuff doesn't quite work out that way one of the things about rotisserie chicken of course they take a long time to cook it and it cooks in its own juices but everything gets really soft. And you don't necessarily think about it when you're just eating just chicken and maybe some vegetables or maybe the mashed potatoes. But when you're going to use it for anything else, it's already cooked, it's really soft, and it's mushy. So what happened is I started off by frying the rice, and then I decided I'm going to do my vegetables and put it in there. Then I put in the chicken, I put in my flavored sauce, and it just didn't look right while I was cooking it. But it smelled okay, so I said, okay, this ought to be good. But when I went to go, you know, put some on my plate, I said, wow, why is this all gummy and everything? And it turns out it was gummy because the chicken, like I said, when I was pulling it apart, because, you know, I pulled it apart ahead of time and put it all in a big bowl so I could just put it in, well, the chicken was mushy. And once the chicken was mushy, then it just made everything else mushy. Everything kind of stuck together. It just didn't cook right. <laughs> And so it didn't mean I didn't eat it, you know. I still ate it, but I wasn't as enthused. I still have some in the fridge because I have to now work my way through. It wasn't one of the better batches of stuff that I've made. A little bit disappointing. And you know what? I spend enough money on food that I end up not eating because it doesn't come out right or it turns out not to be what I want for me to basically throw this away because it had a lot more ingredients. It costs a little bit more money. Now, I'm telling you this story because, in a way, I tried to shortcut what I knew already worked for expediency. I'm thinking, you know what, this time I don't have to cook the chicken because it's a full process. I mean, you know, you have to kind of rinse it off. Then you, you know, fry the chicken. You flip it over a little bit, fry it some more. Then you pull it out. And now I've got to cut it all up because that's what I do. I start cutting it all up before it's totally done instead of just continually flipping it and I'm seasoning it the entire time and it, you can't cook it on high so it takes maybe 15 minutes to cook the chicken separate so basically to save what I'm thinking 15 minutes I gave up quality and that was just yucky that's not anything we should do and you know there's a big message here where you're talking about quality and all these other kind of things where, um, you know, people take shortcuts. 
to stuff all the time. There are people, for instance, when you're talking about blogging or writing, where they'll say, well, just buy PLR rights and then change a few words, and now you've got a post. That's true, but there's no quality there. There are people who pay other people to write full books for them on topics they know nothing about, so they can sell the book. But they don't necessarily know what the quality of that book is because they haven't read it. Sometimes they don't even read it. Sometimes they do read it, but because they don't know the topic, they don't know if it's quality or not. They don't know if it's right or not. They just do it. Uh, earlier in the month, I asked my friend Kelvin. I, you know, I talk about him all the time. So I said, hey, dude, tell you what. How about you write a guest post for my blog? And he said, on what? I said, whatever you want to write on. Whatever you think makes you look good. Just write an epic post. And he said, what does epic mean? I said, epic is whatever you think you can produce that you will be proud of, proud enough so that you will promote it and share with people and say, hey, look what I did. He said, well, what if you don't like it? I said, it has nothing to do with me. This is you, your own pride. How do you feel? You put something together. I said, I'm going to post it however you write it. The only thing I'll change is, is if there's some spelling mistakes, I will fix that. And I did something with spacing to make it easier to read. Um, on the blog but otherwise I left the whole thing and he did a good job why because he didn't want to see be seen as someone who is just going to take the easy route out and and give me something that wasn't quality something that didn't represent what he hoped to represent for himself you know you can take a lot of shortcuts to success or to doing things instead of really putting in the work and you might get away with it but what have you really learned what have you really done you know, and what if it turns out that it's bad? <laughs> I mean, you know, if, if it's bad, then you only have yourself to to think or blame or whatever for it. Um, you know, if you have someone fix your car, do you want them just to get some duct tape? I know uh, everyone always says duct tape, but it's really duct, D-U-C-T, although I go with the gorilla stuff so because it works better. And then I don't have to call it anything except gorilla tape. Anyway. Do you want that kind of person fixing your car where all they're using is this tape stuff? Or do you want a true mechanic who knows everything about the inside of your car is going to do quality work? You know, think about that. Um, I remember a line from the movie Armageddon. And a lot of people beat up on Armageddon, but you know what? I love the movie. Anyway, there was a line in the movie, and I don't remember the exact words, but the guy says, think about this. We're flying on this piece of technology that is going to take us into space and put us on an asteroid, and it was built by the lowest bidder. <laughs> you know, think about that for a bit. You know, if you're going to always go for the lowest price, then you're going to get what you paid for. Sometimes you got to pay better. Sometimes you got to do better so that you have quality. And if your name is on it, you always want it to be quality. That's Mitchell's take on it. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think that it's okay to skimp on quality just to produce things. Think about some of the foods you like to eat, that you really like to eat. And think about how you would feel, because I keep having to go through this, when something that you loved, that you love, is all of a sudden lesser quality because of something that the manufacturers did. Just think about it. Y'all know who I am. You take care and have a wonderful day.